Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to have a look at two things. We're going to have a look at how you can write a melody in the MIDI clip section over here in Ableton, for example, or whatever DAW you're using, and convert that into a LFO shape in Vital, and then map that to the pitch and get a nice melodic sequence going on without drawing it manually within Vital. Um, the other one is actually a free Max for Live device called Randunka, which is a um, which is a step sequencer made by a mate of mine called Adrenochrome, uh, which is his um, producer name. As usual, I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get these devices um, and a link to Siger's YouTube channel. Where, which is the guy that made this software that lets you convert the midi clips into LFO shapes and the other way around, that you can extract an LFO shape into MIDI information. So that way you could basically dissect, or not dissect, but um, extract LFO shapes into MIDI information and thus study the, the melody that that particular uh, preset has. And maybe educate yourself more on how they're done and uh, or further tweak them to your liking and maybe reuse a MIDI with other patches and such uh, and other synth. Anyway, uh, let's get started. So normally when, like the, the, the most common way to make sequences within a synth like Vital um, is to manually draw each step uh, within the actual graph. So if I was to make a two bar long sequence playing in a timing of 16th notes in note divisions, I would have to set it to two bars and then on the X grid have 32 steps. And then if I want it to be over two octaves, I need to maximize this one up to 24 steps on the, on the Y axis, which would, where each step would represent a note on your keyboard. So that would be your root note and then up one note and so on and so forth. And this can be a very, very tedious thing to work with because first of all, you need to figure out your intervals. And if you're like me, who doesn't really have a musical, like a musical classical music background or don't really, or isn't that really experienced with, with music theory and in particular doing this kind of stuff, like drawing in the steps one by one, finding the right notes and everything. It's, it's, it's just a pain in the ass to work that way, in my opinion. So Siger, he developed a uh, software which lets you convert um, MIDI patterns into LFO shapes. And thus you can skip this this um, tedious um, workflow by drawing it manually. So anyway, let's get started with creating a melody. So I'm going initialize, to initialize this one. And for the sake of this tutorial, while we draw the melody, I'm going to make the sound a little bit pluckier so we can get a more feel of how the sound is um, to the actual melody. And I'm going to create a little patch without actually listening to it. And let's just put some we don't need any delay, maybe some reverb. Um, turn the mix, turn down the timing. Maybe have some unison, I don't know, five voices, draw back the unison to, I don't know, 8%. And uh, we should have, yeah. Oops, I accident accidentally deleted the channel. Yeah, cool. So let's get started. You're limited to this, couple of things that you need to know. Um, as far as, it, as I've been testing the software, um, I'm limited to writing two bar long melodies. And I think it has to do with a limitation in Vital rather than the actual software, because the software, as far as I know, doesn't have a built-in limitation on how long the MIDI can be, the MIDI clip. What's limiting it from creating longer sequences is actually Vital's ability to not have too many LFO points. 
And when you're trying to import a MIDI clip that extends to bars, what I've encountered is that Vital tries to understand the amount of how many points you're using, but at some point when it reaches the maximum length, it's gonna glitch out. So you're gonna get a weird looking shape. And as soon as you click somewhere on Vital, the, everything just crashes. So I advise you to not try to break it as I did. <laughs> um, but anyway, and also, yeah, um, you're limited to, I, I think I already mentioned, but it's between C1 and C3. We can look on the instructions before we do the actual conversion. So you guys can see the actual software because I haven't shown it yet. So uh, let's get back to the actual uh, creative writing of our melody. So I'm going to hit Control Shift M to create a MIDI clip, which is two bars. And I'm going to start at C1, and I'm going to use the C Phrygian dominant scale, and I activated the scale function. And I like to start by getting the rhythmical pattern down for my bass notes um, that are going to hit the root notes. So let's try that out and see how it goes. So now it might not sound too much sense without context, but um, the next step is I want to have a Goa, classic Goa-ish feeling to it. And I'd never actually understood to before how to really get that feeling of it. But um, after watching some tutorials and attending some classes from other producers, what they gave as a tip um, was to try to keep it simple. Um, and there's a little trick where if you go one step above from your root note, so plus one in a classic step sequencer, and <coughs> what is it? I think it's minus two from the from your root note, so plus one and minus two. If you just have a play around with those, you can get a pretty decent sounding melody without too much effort. So let's try that out. And of course, play around with the octaves, and of course, don't limit yourself to only those, but I'm gonna keep it simple for the sake of this tutorial. Um, so let's let's try and 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 write down a melody. So let's go up one one uh, one octave, and then perhaps go down and then up, and then keep it on the one octave above. So it's C two, and then go up again, and then we go down, and then on the um, on the root again, and then maybe. No, that's not on the root. That's on the root. And then maybe up one, but over here. And then down on the root again. And then maybe, so something like that. So let's see. Yeah, we're getting there. I can feel it. <laughs> So yeah, there we got our simple Goa riff uh, melody, arpeggio, or whatever you want to call it. We can even spread it out further and go even... 
But yeah, gotta remember, I think now we're exceeding the range, so I'm just gonna go down there for, for just to be safe. Um, so yeah, we got our melody down, and um, it's all cool and stuff. I mean, we could technically go it as this, but let's say, for example, like, I really... What I really like about the software that it, I, I think it will be especially useful for preset makers and people in general who like to create a lot of presets either for themselves or for people that makes a living out of, by, by selling a lot of preset packs. Um, especially for Vital, since Vital is a free synthesizer you can grab on vital.audio. You just need to register yourself for an account and, um, and uh, since it's free and it has a lot of features actually um and it's really good you could you could th there's also it also makes it very accessible for for the majority of the um of the markets of, of producing music um there's also a good market for creating preset packs for it as well so i believe that especially preset pack uh, makers will find this software very nice to work with um so now once we have our, our melody, all we have to do is right click, export the MIDI clip, give it a name, my cool melody, save it to our desktop, which is uh, as a dot mid file. <clears throat> and we're gonna exit the full screen view, gonna minimize this. And we got our cool melody over here. And let's see, BLC doesn't let us open with Winamp <laughs> yep I'm still a Winamp user um, anyway so we got our cool melody over there and <clears throat> the software is in within this folder and this is what you get really uh, when you buy it so all you have to do is open the index file and you will be directed to a website quotation marks um, what it actually does, it opens up um, uh, a HTML file, which is browsing locally on your computer. It's just that it uses the web, web browser as an interface. So I believe you can actually use this offline. So you can install it on your studio computer if you don't have internet on it. And then file or pick file in Swedish. Click, choose the MIDI file um, and open it. And as you can see here, it detected the notes that we were playing within the MIDI. And then it has done some magic in the background and converted that into an LFO shape, which should work with Vital. Now, as you can see, it already directed me directly to the folder because I've been saving shapes before, so it remembers where I want to store it. But if you have trouble finding this, um, because it can be different on your computer, you can go into Vital, head to the LFO menu, go to User, right-click, Open File Location, and you'll be directed to this folder where um, Vital fetches all the user stuff that you made yourself. And then you just go into LFOs. And you can click here to copy the path and you can paste it over here and you'll be directed to the same folder that I'm already having open. And then you just save it. You go back into Vital and you should have your melody that was in MIDI but turned into an LFO shape. Pretty cool. So sure, it might be some steps, but um, I still think it beats drawing everything manually <laughs> directly in the LFO graph like this, because I couldn't, like, of course I could perhaps maybe at some point after many trials and errors, figure out the, the um, correct positions of the notes, but this way, I'm sure it's the correct, um, correct uh, placements of the notes and the the steps. And all we have to do is map it to the pitch. And I don't know if you paid attention to it, but it says here, 
um, make sure to snap LFO points to the grid size 24 semitones. And to get 24 semitones, you when you map it to the LFO, you can enter the value 24, and that should give you uh, the correct value in order for it to be translated correctly. Um, now, I wrote the melody in C, but my track is in F. So I can just take this pattern over here and move it up an octave, for example. And let's try and play it with the kick and bass. But I need to have a sustained note before I do that, because now we're having the LFO shape playing the melody uh, over this long sustained MIDI note. And to get that same kind of plucky effect, what we can do is we can go to the LFO, map it to the level, turn it back, turn it back up again with the amount, and we should get a similar type of vibe. And I did a two bar long sequence, which means the LFO, um, sorry, not on this one, this should be in 1 16th. So this would be a note division 1 16th, but the, the length of the sequence is two bars. So I need to up this to two bars as well. And then we can go ahead and um, play it. Let's see how it sounds. And you can add some interest to it. Um, like if you take away a point, like so, you can make this glide up to that one. So we can do this with maybe all of these small, small sections, for example. And if we want to be more dramatic, we can do something like this. Maybe play it an octave higher. And if we don't like it, we can just go back to it. Uh, where is it? Over here. So yeah, uh, just want to say thank you, Siger, for creating this epic piece of software. Um, I'm going to abuse this one <laughs> once I get into preset making in Vital. Um, So I don't think I have anything left to add regarding this. I mean, it's pretty straightforward how you use it. As I mentioned before, I don't think I mentioned it before actually, now come to think of it. You can do the opposite. Um, you can take Vital and another LFO shape and you can convert it into MIDI. So let's say you have a preset somewhere from a pack and you're very, very curious how, what notes the uh, sequence the the LFO is is playing. Um, you can extract that shape um, using the the software, and it's gonna spit out spit it out in into MIDI information. And then you can further tweak it to your liking. You can study it for for um, educational purposes, uh, extract the MIDI and use with other synths maybe that you prefer using, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, super cool stuff. Really like it. The other thing, which you probably noticed before, is the Randanka sequencer, which I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Um, also a very straightforward plugin, um, albeit, uh, albeit it's simple, um, but it's very user-friendly and um, in, in general a very useful plugin, um, especially if you want to get some uh, sounds going on quickly. 
Um, so what we have here is a velocity length and um, this is gate length and this is the amount of steps. Um, then you have reset buttons, which resets everything to the default um, default state. And then you have randomize uh, buttons. So um, let's turn this off. So what I have here is just a long MIDI note playing in F0. And uh, it's a preset of my upcoming faceplant pack, which I've been working on forever. And um, let's just, you know, classic FM sound. Um, I think the table is taken from one of my uh, weight table packs, which you can grab on my Gumroad. Could be one that I haven't included in the actual pack, but uh, maybe I should do that at some point. We'll see. Anyway, um, so the patch, I give away some hints here. So it says macro 6 needs random velocity to work. This is macro 6, and you can see that it modulates the velocity amount. So if I have it on, at zero, um, random velocity, it's not going to, nothing's going to happen. And if we look at the, it takes the velocity depth and the velocity is modulating the frame. Now I have two points. The other one is the a macro for setting the weight table position if you don't want to use the node on random macro. So if I set it like this, it's not gonna work. But if I turn that down, no, sorry. If I leave that up and turn that down, um, it's gonna work and it's maxed out velocity, so that's why it goes all the way up. Um, so that's the patch we're going to use to demonstrate this one. So let's randomize the velocity and see how it sounds. And let's randomize the... No, let's wait for that. It's off, of course. So yeah, it's moving the weight table position. And this sounds a little bit chaotic and sounds like shit. Uh, let's randomize the gate length. Let's maybe turn down the actual amount of steps. And let's say I don't like that one. I want to change that manually. So I can do that as well. Same with the with the steps. And I can also, like, if I want to have a different kind of stepping going on, if I can say it that way, I don't know. I can even randomize the stepping as well. Um, so let's say I want to have some kind of polymetric pattern going on. I just need to alter the, the amount of steps. So 24 bars, no, 24 steps. I think that's like one and a half, two and a half bars, one and a half bar. But the looping is actually two bars. So once it reaches the end, it's going to loop somewhere around here and then start from there, go on, and then start looping back. So yeah, that's the uh, Redunka sequencer, which you can grab for free on Adrenochrome's Gumroad or webpage. I can't remember if it was a Gumroad, actually. I'll link both sites in the description. Same with Siger's Vital, Vital LFO shape to MIDI and uh, other way around. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, it's been quite of a long video, but um, so I hope you could stick through all the way. That makes sense.
Uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye.